In this short clip, I will run through a typical setup in Opal's preferences for a school library. We will start by addressing user types. User types are defined by the maximum number of loans or reservation each user can make on items in the library. Different user types will allow, for example, a student to have different loan values than you would assign a teacher. Another example would be different library staff members having different rights in the OPAL system. Perhaps you have a volunteer that will only loan and return library items. You can set up a volunteer user type and limit the rights to just loan and return. Finally, you can also set up your students with different loan rights. An example would be if your K through first graders have a maximum of two items and your second through fourth graders are allowed to borrow four items. This is accomplished by adding, editing both user types and the item types. To access user types, select Administration from your home screen in Opals, Preferences, User Types from the Preferences menu. In this example, I will edit the student user type and call it K through first grade. I will edit the values, maximum loans, reserves, and overdues. But please note, the final editing and setting of these values will take place in the item types section which I will show shortly. To edit, click the pad to the far right of the student user type and change the name at the top to K hyphen first grade and put in values below. Again, these values are finalized in the item type preferences. These students are allowed two items and two reserves. As far as the max overdues, if this is filled in with a numbered value, then loans will not be allowed and cannot be overridden beyond the value set in max overdue. A zero is assumed unless filled in with a positive number. For this clip, I will leave the value blank and address this in the system preferences a bit later. I would recommend you also leave the max overdues blank as well. I have edited the formerly the student user to now say K through first grade and will click the save button at the bottom. Now I will create another user type by clicking Add New at the bottom and will create a group 2nd through 4th grade. These students will have a loan limit set to 4 items and 4 reserves. I will save this as well. We will now finish editing these two new user types by going to the item types option on the Preferences menu, and we will edit these two new groups created. Please note that if you do create different groups by grade or grades for different loan values, you will need to populate these groups using the Group Editor tool in Opals and move the respective grade to the new or newly created user types. Please call Tech Support or look for another video that I will have on moving users to different user types. To access item types, select Administration tab, Preferences, Item Types from the Preferences menu. Item types are applied to each holding in your collection. The item type is used by the system to calculate the loan, renewal, reserve, or hold periods for each type of resource in the library. Note, the loan periods are defined by the days set in library hours, which is also on your preferences menu, as open days, i.e., if you are open five days a week, then a one-week loan is five, a two-week loan period is 10. In other words, business days. So if your library is closed on the weekends and you say you loan 
to your students for three weeks. That would not be 21 days, that would be 15 days. Each type can be created or modified as you wish. As many item types can be created as needed in your library. You may also catalog DVDs, create an item type for them. Or maybe you have professional books that only go out to teachers, create an item type for them. Or reference collection, or rare book collection, etc. By creating the different item types, you can have a more granular control over who gets what and how many for each type of item in your library. So if DVDs do not go out to students, then the student category there would be marked zero days, etc. The system default of G, i.e. general collection, typically accounts for the bulk of your circulating collection. Item types apply to each user type. For example, the K through first grade user type can have different loan periods for G, i.e. your general collection, than say a teacher or faculty at your school. Their user type may have a longer loan period, or a teacher can have a book longer than a student and can borrow more books than the students. I am in the item types for general collection and will address the two new user types just created. We are viewing the G item type and looking to the far right you will see a notepad. Click this notepad to open the editor. The editor is now open and I will adjust the values for the various user types for our general collection. Please note that this is a new site and the general collection shows zero for items. When you import your data, or if your data has already been imported, you will see a holdings number listed such as 9,000 items, 11,270 items, etc. I will adjust the values for our K through first grade. These students can have items for two weeks, so I will leave the value at 10. They can renew items for another two weeks, so I will leave that value at 10. Coming to the reserve period, I will increase this value to 100 days. This way, if an item does not come back as expected on time, a user's reserve will not expire until 100 days. I suggest a high number here. For the hold period value, I suggest 5 to 10 days. A book was on reserve and has been returned. The user who reserved the book has been notified, and this user slash student teacher will have 5 days to pick it up from the library. You do not want a high value here as the book will show unavailable in the OPAC, as on hold. You may alert the student that their book is in, but perhaps they borrow a copy from a friend and may never come to pick it up. You do not want the item on hold for too long. Usually we see 5 to 10 days. I will make my value 5 days. The grace period value is for libraries that charge fines and wish to give a few days grace period before the fines begin to be assessed. I will leave my values at zero as we do not charge fines in this library. The max renewal section is a value for how many times a user can renew an item. I will put a value of two for these two new user groups. They can renew two times. Finally, we have the max item loaned column. This value should reflect your loan policies for each user type. My K through first grade is only allowed two books, so I'll put a value of two. Please note, if a student needs additional items, this value can be overridden when in circulation. I will now edit the second through fourth grade user group. The same values will be used except these students can take out four books total. So in the 
max item loaned, I will put in 4 or make sure it says 4 from the user type that we already created. Again, these values can be overridden at the CERC desk as needed. Now I will edit the values for teachers. Teachers have a loan period of four weeks, which would be 20 days, a renewal period four weeks, which is 20 days. The reserve will be a high number, so a reserve does not expire. I will keep it the same as for students, 100 days. The hold value, I will keep it the same as students, five days, as teachers will only have five days to pick up a reserve item. The grace value will be set at zero as we do not charge fines. The maximum renewal at five for teachers and maximum items loaned will be 40 items, which again can be overridden at the CERC desk. Looking at the ILL interlibrary loan user category, our library does not interlibrary loan items, so I will remove this user type by going back to the Preferences menu, choose User Types, and click the red garbage bin on the far right of ILL User Type to delete this user type. Please note that you can always create this type again if you do start using interlibrary loan. In review, we have edited user types on the preferences menu and have changed student user type to K through first grade. We have added another user type, second through fourth grade. We then went to item types on the preferences menu and edited the values for length of loan, renewals, reserve period, hold period, and how many items the two new groups as well as our two teacher groups can have. Now we will look at a few areas of system preferences. Select the Administration tab, Preferences, System Preferences at the top of the menu. We will look at Section 3, Overdue and Fine Management. Allow Overdue. 95% of the schools choose Override with a question. Student has a book to take out and you find that he or she has an overdue. If you try and loan, a window will pop up noting student has overdues. You can ask the student to bring the book back soon and then override the pop-up to loan the book. The other choices are no override or override automatically. Again, 95% of our school libraries choose override with a question. Allow outstanding balance. You can put a limit on how much a student can owe the library before they are stopped from loans at CERC. Again, this option has three options, and 95% of school libraries choose Override with a Question, which gives you the opportunity to speak with the student. If your library charges fines, click on the line and choose On. Charge Damage. If your library charges for damaged books, Click on the line and choose On. For Charge Lost, if you charge for lost books, same as above, click the line and choose On. If you charge for Overdue, click the line and choose On. Pre-overdue. If you like, you can have an automatic notice sent to your patrons via email, alerting your students, teachers, etc., that they have an item coming due. 
There is a range of 1 to 10 days that you can choose for this courtesy notice to be generated. We will now go to the Fine Rate Editor and set up our fines. Please note that if you do not charge fines, the settings for fines in the system preferences should be set to off, and you would not need to go to this section on the Fine Rate Editor. To access the Fine Rate Editor, the Admin tab, choose Preferences, and then at the very bottom choose Fine Rate Editor. You will see item types on the left. You can charge different fine rates for different item types. This example is simple in that we only have G for general collection. Our fine rate is five cents per day and we have a ten dollar maximum. You will notice the exemption option. Click this to exempt various user types from having fines assessed. In this example I will exempt library staff and teacher from fines. Once you click your exemptions and close the window, make sure you save your changes at the bottom of the Fine Rate Editor, towards the middle of the very bottom of the screen. The final section we will cover in this clip is the Closing Dates Editor. To get to the Closing Dates Editor, the Admin tab, choose Preferences, and towards the bottom of the Preferences menu, choose Closing Dates Editor. The Closing Dates Editor is now open. I will first adjust my last date setting at the top. This will be the last date that books will be due at the end of the school year. Typically, libraries set this date a week or two prior to the last day of school. This is done so all books come back and the library can get things cleaned up and ready for the fall school year. Our school's last date in this example is June 21st. I will have our last date set to June 7th. So, for example, if a student would like a book to take out on June 6th, it will be due the next day, June 7th. That is what the last day setting does. I will now add some closed days. Click Add More Closing Dates on the bottom of the window towards the right, and then go to the calendar next to the top line and choose your date. Our first closed day will be Labor Day, September 3, 2018. Now I will put in our Professional Development Day of October 12th. Going to the next line below, choosing the calendar, find October 12th, and add that to your listing. You can fill in something like PD or professional day right in the white area so you know what the day is that you're closing for. Finally, I will add close days for the winter break. I will enter in December 21st and then to make it easy once the first date is entered simply click the dupe key until your last day of the break. The close dates will all be in order. Click Save at the bottom of the screen to save all your changes during this particular session of editing your closing dates. Often a library will take the new calendar for the year and add it all at once. You do not have to do this as you can always enter close dates at any time of the year. For further questions, please contact Opal's Tech Support via email or phone, and I hope this video clip has been helpful.